Hey everyone, my name is Jose. And I also go by Joe Engineer on social media. And today I'm gonna show you how to paint my favorite racing livery, the iconic Martini racing stripes on a garage wall. So stick around and I'll show you how to do that on this video. So how does one do Martini racing stripes? Well, here's an example of some stripes that I did in my home office about, man, already about maybe eight years ago. And you can do them with simply three different colors of paint, some one inch green masking tape, and a few basic measurements. These are some uh, dimensions that I found for uh, online for these stripes. And I used these very basic dimensions to do this, these stripes that you see here. And it looks pretty good, you know, for a wall application. I couldn't tell you if they are actually the same ratios or dimensions as, say, for example, what you would see on, on any of the race cars. And to be honest, there are so many different race cars with so many different versions of the stripes that I'm not sure how you would be able to, to tell um, the difference between all of them. So don't use these dimensions to paint stripes on your Concours historic race car. Um, but if you want to go ahead and put them on your garage or on, you know, something decorative in the house, then, then go ahead. So here's the general strategy for how to paint these stripes. You will first paint a, a lot, two light blue stripes and the red stripe in one shot, and you will mask in between above and in between both sets of stripes. Then you will paint the light blue and the red. Once you've done that, you peel off the tape and then you go back and you have to mask above, below, and in between each um, set of the dark blue stripes. And you wanna start with the light colors first and then paint the dark blue above the other two colors because if you do it the other way it may be you may need to do more than one coat to cover the light color over the blue color so light blue and red first and then we'll do the the dark blue uh, later and these are the very basic dimensions that i have found that have worked for my wall i'll um post a link to a better quality uh, version of this this diagram and you can do all the spacings with some one inch uh, green tape use the green stuff and not the blue stuff because it, it, because it tends to create crisper uh, lines in between the two colors for example uh, here i can't remember what kind of tape i use but you can see that the uh, edges are a little um, a little ragged it's very possible that I use the blue tape at that point in time, but um, it's fine. I'm okay with it. But more importantly, I wanted to show you a close-up of this because you can see that the one-inch tape is all you need to do some of these um, divisions. Uh, you don't need any wider tape or narrower tape, and that's that's kind of all all you need to do. You just got to lay out your stripes correctly, and that should be enough. Also, one inch tape is not really one inch wide. It's actually 0.94 uh, inches, or at least that's how it's advertised. And actually, if you put a pair of calibers on here, it's not even 0.94 inches. It's a different dimension altogether. So if you're OCD, just be prepared for that. But for all intents and purposes, we're just going to call it one inch tape. And I'm going to call these dimensions out as is. Uh, just in, in in the interest of keeping it simple, you'll still come out with a pretty decent set of stripes here. Now, how do you lay out your stripes on the wall? 
able to first paint the two light blue and the red stripes, you will need to lay out the boundaries of each of the blue stripes. So one, two, three, four lines. And in order to set the height of the overall uh, stack, you need this line up here too, at least for a, on a short section of the wall. That's what I have here. Hopefully you can see them as they are very, very faint on this gray wall, but I've just laid them out with a pencil. Um, these are basically the light blue stripe is in here. The red stripe is in here. The other light blue is up here. And the, here is where the top dark blue stripe is. And here is the very top of the entire uh, bar of stripes that will go all the way across. Now I only have these four laid out on the entire remaining length. And I just have this short wall here with the top stripe just for reference, just to set the overall height of everything and then I can build it down. Now, the reason why I did that was because on this short wall here next to the door, I have this fuse panel that kind of uh, actually sets my height is a good good point. So my my um, I'll have about a one inch spacing between the top of the stripes and the bottom of the, the box. What this allows us to do is to be able to mask up here, down here, right here, and down here, and then have the blue, the red, and the blue in the correct dimensions. Now, some tips for creating some straight horizontal lines. It is most important for you to try to make these lines be as horizontal as possible. You can use a tape measure and make little marks every few inches, just so that when you're connecting, when you're using a level and you're connecting your line segments, you know that you're roughly on the right track. That way, if one of your tick marks is off, like this one is, as long as it's fairly close, then you know that you're on the right track. But if it's way off and now your tick mark is down here, but the level is telling you that it's up here, then maybe when you step back, you'll see your line actually going this way or that way or something. Also, as you're laying out your lines, occasionally look down the edge of the wall to make sure that they're nice and horizontal. And if you go if you look at each line up close, they should look fairly flat. If you see them, you know, wavy like this, then, then you've got some problems. But overall, these are fairly fairly straight. And once you paint them, they're gonna look they're gonna look really nice. Nice and straight. 
Now repeat three more times and you can do your stripes. All taped up and ready to go. Seem pretty straight to me. So the painting is now complete, at least for this, this first um, half of the process. We were able to get away with one, one coat of the blue um, and then, you know, come back and I came back and touched up some of the uh, bare brush marks on the light blue. The red though was kind of a transparent color and I had to do two coats because um, you could see brush marks where the color was um, darker in some spots than others. So we did uh, two whole coats. Now I will proceed to peel off the tape starting at one end and going all the way to the other. Peel them off one at a time uh, and pull the tape 90 degrees to the wall perpendicular to the wall so that the tape cuts a nice clean edge on the on the paint. I'm going to do the outer ones first because they're they are more dry and then we'll go ahead and do the the inner ones next. So far so good. There was a little bit of bleeding on the edges of the red only because the red paint was a little bit more watery than the blue paint so it was able to find its way below the, uh, the tape but so far you know nothing major plus we're gonna do the blue stripes over it the dark blue stripes. Honestly this is not bad the way it is it almost has a Brumos racing type of vibe, except for the extra blue stripe. But um, yeah, pretty good. We're gonna let this cure for a couple of days because then we gotta tape over it to do the blue stripes and then we'll uh, continue with the, uh, the painting. Okay, now we're going to start the second step of the painting process, the preparation for the the dark blue stripes of the martini livery. Now, if you notice here, you're going to be preparing for essentially six blue stripes. So in order to make this happen after you've done these three bars, you essentially have to do this. The you draw another line above the light blue stripe one and a half inches all the way down 
and another uh, line below the bottom blue stripe one and a half inches away all the way down those are the last two lines that you have to draw in order to be able to have the outermost tape lines so you have one two three four five six seven eight individual tape lines which on my wall this is about one roll of the tape of this rock tape that i'm using um, so by my calculations this should be about one roll and this should be another roll and i have a third roll um, as a backup just in case but as as you can see after you tape above here, you'll have a dark blue stripe here, another dark blue stripe here, another one here, nothing here, and then another blue stripe here, here, and here. And uh, after that, you should be done. Um, another thing to keep in mind is when you are taping, since we essentially will be um, laying another color in between these two colors, you want to make sure that you don't get any of the, the wall color showing in between either of these two color boundaries. So you kind of want to do what I've done here. If I can zoom in here, I've stuck the tape to the very, very hard edge that I drew here, and there's a little bit of bleed through. You want to make sure the edge of the tape is not beyond the edge of this color here so that you don't have any of the white uh, showing through. This way when you paint over when the, uh, with the dark blue and you peel it off, you'll have dark blue and light blue and red with uh, no wall showing through on either side. So that's about it. Since you've already seen the taping, the line drawing and taping process for uh, these stripes, I'm gonna go ahead and skip straight to the, um, to where we paint the dark blue stripes now. So two rolls of tape later, and I'm finally ready to paint. A Couple of last minute tips before you get started painting. This, uh, the frog tape specifically, as you as you put a lot of it down, like I did, um, you start to collect little little bits of glue from the tape itself onto your fingers as you smooth it down, um, and then eventually there's just a whole bunch of them, and they get stuck to your fingers on the tape and on the wall itself. So if you don't want these little glue boogers to remain on your surface that you're going to paint go ahead and grab a blue shop towel and uh, you know give it a nice wipe all down the entire length of the wall that way you flatten down the tape and you catch some of those little boogers as well um, also if I hadn't mentioned it already on one end of the wall make sure you leave some little little pull tabs for yourself so that you can go ahead and um, uh, peel the tape off easily uh, once you're done painting. Otherwise, we're ready to go. Two coats of dark blue paint later, and the painting is now complete. After doing this, um, I realized that I needed to do a second coat of the dark blue because it was really patchy in the same way that it was here with the red. And to be honest, you may as well do two coats of every single color um, just to be on the safe side and make sure that you get a nice uniform color because um, you know, doing touch up after removing all of the tape is going to be um, nearly impossible.
it took a very long time to do. And now I'm going to go ahead and pull the, the tape off now that it's uh, dried up a little bit, but uh, can't leave it overnight because then when you go to pull your tape lines off, obviously the um, um, your edge won't be as clean. So this is the time to do it. Now after all this work, I finally have my own set of hand-painted martini racing stripes inside my garage. I can't believe how well they, they came out. They look so good. They almost look like a, a decal, but nope, they're hand-painted and uh, Finally done. So happy with the result. Look at that. A completely unintended but very welcome surprise here is how the martini stripes drape over the curves of the front end of my 911. So cool. So happy with the way all this turned out. So if you've learned something from this video and I hopefully motivated you to add some motorsport inspired color to your walls, not just martini stripes, but um, any kind of stripes, uh, please like and subscribe and uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much. Goodbye.